In this lecture, we're going to learn how to query data tables from the Crypto Ethereum BigQuery public data set using Python and SQL. So join me at Google Colab, which you can access at colab.research.google.com. Here, we're going to get started with querying our Crypto Ethereum table. So we are going to import the pandas library and then grab a data frame by using pandas.io.gbq.read underscore Google big query. Here we pass in our query as a multi-line string. As well, we're going to need to pass in our project ID, which we can create over at the Google Cloud Platform. And the dialect, we are going to use the standard dialect for SQL. So here we have two of our arguments defined, but we do have to create that project ID variable. I'm going to use Mammoth Interactive 0, which is one of my project IDs here at the Google Cloud Platform. And Next up, I'm going to pass in my query. So I'm going to select all from a data set, specifically the Crypto Ethereum data set, which you can find by going to the Big Query Explorer and searching up Crypto Ethereum. And here you can see Crypto Ethereum and Crypto Ethereum Classic, these two data sets. We're going to use Crypto Ethereum, where you can see these different tables. So you can select one of these tables like balances and then go to the details for that table and you want to copy the table ID. Then the table ID is what you pass in as your table name. We can also limit the query to the first 10 entries. Then we can run the code cell and allow for the runtime to initialize and connect. We'll be prompted to authorize Google Colab to access BigQuery. So you have to click this link and then enter the authorization code. Make sure that you authorize the app with the same Google account that you used for the Google Cloud platform when you created the project. Otherwise, the Colab will not be able to access the project. Then you can paste in your authorization code and the query will be performed. You can check the results with the dataframe.head function. We get the first five entries returned. So here, remember, we only queried 10 entries from the balances, which gives us the address and the Ethereum balance in way, the smallest denomination of Ether for that table. We can also query other tables from the data set. We just have to pass in the table ID for the table that we want to get. So this is how we can query our balances. Now let's modify the query and find the top Ethereum balances. So I'm going to copy my code cell. We don't have to redo the imports and the variables, but let's call our query with a slight modification. This time I'm going to find the top Ethereum balances. So for that, I add in a line that says order by ETH underscore balance. So I'm going to order by a column and we're going to order in descending order. So this time, instead of just showing us the first five addresses, we're going to see the top five addresses because we're ordering by their balance in descending order. We can run this code cell to execute the query. And then we can call dataframe.head to inspect our results. And this time we'll see the top five addresses because the head function returns the top five rows. And we can see the Ethereum balance for that address. So these are the highest performing or the most volume of way in an address. These are the richest addresses. So that is how we can query the crypto Ethereum data set, specifically the balances table. Coming up next, we're going to learn how we can query other tables in the crypto Ethereum data set. So don't miss that next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to select Ethereum traces by date using the crypto Ethereum data set from BigQuery. So previously we saw the crypto Ethereum data set and we inspected and queried the balances table. 
In this lecture, we're going to query the traces table. So that's another table in the same data set. Here we can see the table schema. We have the transaction hash where the trace occurred, a trace being an internal Ethereum transaction. So transactions can trigger smaller actions that modify the internal state of the Ethereum virtual machine. And information about the execution of these actions is logged and can be stored or found as an Ethereum virtual machine execution trace. So that's what we mean by the trace. We also get the integer of the transactions index position in the block. We get the address of the sender, the address of the receiver, the value transferred in way, the smallest denomination of ether, the data sent along with the message, the output of the message call, one of call create suicide reward genesis and DAO fork for trace type, depending on what kind of execution it was, the call type, the reward type, the gas provided, the gas used, the number of subtraces, the trace address, an error message if required, the status of success or failure, the timestamp of the block, the block number, the block hash, and a trace ID. So we can see the details about the data sets and get a preview of all of the columns. So let's query this table. Let's go back into our Colab project and I am going to create a new query. So I'm going to create a data frame and I'm going to use pandas.io.gbq.readgbq, pass in a multi-line string and our project ID, which we can use the same project ID as before. If you ever get a message that your project ID has run out of its maximum quota, then just create a new project on Google Cloud Platform. Our dialect will be standard SQL dialect. Then let's create our query. So I'm going to select a date of the block underscore timestamp, which is taking the column of the block timestamp from this traces table converting it to the date format instead of the timestamp format and then calling it date if you add as date and you can capitalize some of your keywords if you like for easier readability we can also get the sum of the value as a name value so this is going to grab the value column which is the value transferred in way it's going to get the sum of the entire value transferred on each day and it's going to call that the value next where are we querying this from we're querying from a table so we go to the details of the table and we copy the table id and we paste the table id in as the name then we're going to group as well our results by a date of the block time stamp and we're going to limit our results to the first 10. Then we can run this code cell and that is going to run our query. Once the query is run, we can then call df.head to inspect the first five results. And we get our first five results where we have the date followed by the value on that date. So this is how we can query the traces table. We can also visualize our results. So for this, I'm going to create a new code cell and I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as pyplot for short. Pyplot is a popular plotting library for visualizing data with Python. So we can create a scatter plot passing in our x and y values. Our x value will be the data frame at the date column and our y value will be the data frame at the value column. We can run the code cell and we get a scatter plot appearing where we see what was the value for our different dates. And we only had 10 in this case because we queried a limit to 10. We can also increase the figure size and the font size of our plot with pyplot.rc params. If we start with figure size, we have to access figure.fig size and we set it to a tuple 20 on the x axis and 10 on the y axis for the size. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. 
We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.